Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emily Freibler and I am sharing how I am turning my house into a home affordably. So today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I redid this dining table. So here's how the dining table started out. I got this dining table from um, Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace for redoing furniture and just finding affordable home things. So I got this dining table and chairs for $125. It is solid wood and ginormous. It is awesome. So I am so excited to share with this with you guys how I redid it and how I made it look a lot more modern. I'm going to show you how I redid the chairs as well in a different video, um, but the table itself I had a vision for. I really wanted this like light wood color. Obviously, as you can see, it's very like a uh, dark cherry color and that's just not like the vibe of my house at all. And it's also just not very on style right now. Um, this table, the person who I got it from, I think got it like. 20 years ago or something or 15 years ago and they were moving and they just honestly wanted to get rid of it so I got it for $125 and that's the steals that you can get on Facebook marketplace I'm telling you you can furnish your home very affordably if you hunt for deals be patient on Facebook marketplace and look every day if there's something specific that you want so I specifically wanted a dining room table and chairs and chairs that I could redo so this table I knew that I could strip off the stain and redo it and I wanted to get it down to its natural state and then take it into something like this so here is my inspo pics that I will share with you guys it I wanted just a very light wood very kind of on trend that not yellow toned not red tone anything like that just very neutral wood and like a matte finish so to get there I started with citrus strips so I don't have a lot of footage of this part of the video but all you basically do is take the citrus strip which is a stripper material and you lather it on pretty thick onto the wood now this whole process is so annoying you guys I will tell you stripping furniture is one of my least favorite things to do but the outcome of this was worth it you just lather this on with a brush and paint it onto the furniture to keep the citrus strip working you don't want it to dry out so what i like to do is take like plastic bags or you could take a trash bag i got like a huge thing of saran wrap from um sam's and i just covered the entire table with saran wrap so that um the air wouldn't affect it and it can completely strip the wood so what you do is you just leave this on for a long time you guys leave it on longer than you think you need to leave it on for like four five eight hours you could leave it on overnight if you want do this thoroughly okay so after the wood is stripped i like to just take a little like putty knife type of thing um, and scrape it off it just a plastic one if you are able to go outside and like spray it off that way that is the easiest way to do it but I wasn't able to do that because honestly it was cold outside and I just didn't want to leave the table out in my front yard for a really long time because I did have it in my garage. So the way I got this stuff off was to scrape it off. I also used like a bristle brush and like a water and some soap and just like scrubbed it. Um, it's very, very tedious. It's the worst part of this whole thing. But I'm telling you, it's worth it in the end. So my advice for you guys is to get off as much as you can possibly with the citrus strip because sanding takes a really long time. So after I stripped the table, mostly, not all the way, I tried bleaching the table. So I will show you some clips of me talking about that as well. I really wanted to pull out all of those red tones. I was researching a lot of stuff and it was like if the uh, stain has been on for a really long time it can really seep into the wood and get into the, all those grooves and you're really not going to be able to get it out any other way other than like bleaching it so I did bleach the wood so here is the table it's looking really good it's just not perfect enough to be done um there's little parts like this where there's just a little bit of stain left um like see on the legs here how there's a little bit of stain I was looking stuff up online and you can bleach wood and that's what I'm doing. So I'm doing this right now to see if I can get some of the red tones out. So here is the table. It's basically going to help get the red tones out, the yellowy tone of the wood as well. And um, people have had great success for it. So I'm literally just saturating the wood 
with the bleach. That's it. It's so easy. And I left that on until it was completely dry and you want to make sure everything is completely dry. I still don't know how valid this next thing that I do is, but I saw it on a YouTube video and I was trying to be really careful by making sure everything was dry and then ventilating the area and stuff. But I know bleach and vinegar you should never mix. Um, but this person was like, wait till it's completely really dry and then rub it down with like a water vinegar mixture and that'll like neutralize it or something. So that's what I did. I don't know how scientific that is. I know you shouldn't mix those things because it creates a gas and everything like that, but do it at your own risk. I'm just saying. I, all I know is that you need to get the bleach off of there somehow because otherwise it can affect the way your stain goes on and your sealant and all of that kind of thing and i didn't want that to happen and i was i was fine after i did this the bleach is all dry on the piece and it definitely neutralized the red tones i still need to go back with citrus strip um, and get a couple places honestly i bounce around a lot in projects so i will tell you the order of things get all your stain off sand it a little bit then bleach the wood that should be how you do it but i'm just doing trial and error so that you guys don't have to the lighting is a little bit yellow so it's making the table look a little bit more yellow than it actually is but as you can see it doesn't have nearly as much red tone going through it all i really need to do is sand out you know some of these patches and stuff and then same over here just like really get a good um sand on this so it's even tone wise especially down at the legs then i went into sanding now this is the part that was very annoying um because i had parts on the top the, the top of the table wasn't very hard because i could just use my orbital sander and sand it all off but since the legs are so ornate um i did have to go in and just hand sand everything okay it's kind of hard to see because of the light so this is the side that i definitely need to sand more because you see the yellowy undertone here and this is where you can really see the difference okay this is the very light wood that looks definitely that bleached bleached tone here you see how light that is that is what I really like. It's almost like a white wood. Now, the other thing that I'm curious about is I did sample putting a whitewash on this side, but then I bleached it. So it's probably not because of the whitewash. So um, I'm going to sand, sand, sand right now, and we'll see where we get. Sorry that the lighting's weird from this tree, um, but this is what the table is looking like. It's such a beaut. So I have my sander and then I have a bunch of different sandpaper grits. I'm probably gonna start with a hundred just to get that like first layer off and then maybe go down a, or up in grit a little bit. I like to have obviously a mask and then a towel just to wipe off any of the like dust and everything so that it's a little bit easier to see what it's looking like. So I've only been sanding for like a couple minutes. Do you guys see how much lighter this got compared to like over here so it's not red at all in the undertone so the bleaching definitely worked and then just sanding off that top layer of the, like a little bit of the yellow and oh, this is gonna be absolutely beautiful i am so excited what i'm gonna do now is go in with different things of sandpaper so i bought a variety pack on amazon so that you can go from like a lower grit to like a super high one so you get like that glossy awesome finish um so let me show you what i have so when i first start i'll probably start with something in like the 180 200 something like that go up to something like a 320 and then finish it off with like an a thousand so this is like no that's 400 the a thousand is like super smooth i don't know if you can tell the difference with the grits um but it really is really, really fine. And that's when it's gonna get you the super, super glossy finish. So for the top, I'm gonna use this. You basically put your sanding or sandpaper in it, just a little block, and it makes it easier 
to sand so like anywhere that's flat i'll use this but then um you and you could use your orbital sander too but then for the legs i'll have to just do it all by hand so go with the grain and just sand it down i'm so excited this table looks amazing so i sanded it all um i ended up just sanding the top because the legs i don't really care if they're super smooth or not but the top i did so like i said i did the varying grades of sandpaper and wiped it all down to get all the sandpaper or sand sanding dust off and we're gonna get to the staining so after I sanded it all down, I did go in with a conditioner for the wood to make sure that the stain and everything would go on really nicely since I did a lot of treatments to it. I wanted to make sure the wood was nice and conditioned, especially after bleaching the wood. All right, here's the wood conditioner. You need gloves and like I said, old t-shirt. These are staining cloths or whatever. I will link anything that I can for you guys. An old t-shirt, a staining pad, whatever. All I'm gonna do is dip in here and go on the wood. You just wanna make sure it's saturated, but not like too much, if that makes sense. You don't want it to um, be like globs of wood conditioner on the piece. And it's stinky, so make sure you have a well-ventilated area. And once you do this, you're gonna have to let it dry for 30 minutes before you um, put any stain on it, just so you know. So I'm basically using the exact same technique with the stain, pickled oak. And this isn't gonna like look like much on the piece I'm using a fresh thing and we're gonna go to town. Okay, do you see how this is pretty yellow still? Um, I'm not sure if you have to do the pickled oak, but I liked the results when I tried this out before. So now we're going to need to use the whitewash and I'm doing this directly after I'm not letting it dry just because I don't think I really need to. Um, I'm gonna do like literally the lightest, lightest, lightest layer of whitewash on here and really work it in and work quickly because I don't want it to be white. I want it to just neutralize the yellow tones of this. All right, I'm gonna show you this on the side of the table instead of the top because this is wet, so I don't wanna put the tripod there. Okay, so I'm gonna need another clean rag. This is literally white, but it's a stain, so it's not paint. It's like, you know, more liquidy. What you wanna do is work really quickly with this and get like just a little tiny bit and really work it in there. See how it's neutralizing the yellow? And I'm taking another rag too, just to make sure I get what I want in here. If there's areas that have a little bit more white, I'm okay with that, but look at the difference here. Do you see this color versus this color? This is more of the tone that I want um, to come out of the table. So yeah, it's all personal preference. You don't necessarily have to do the pickled oak, I don't think, but I like the results with both. Here we go with the whole table. And then after that, all we're gonna do is finish it off. So, so exciting. <laughs> I just wanted to show you this real quick. Look how much the whitewash has neutralized like the yellow tones. This is what the table was looking like after I um, conditioned it and everything and I put pickled oak on and then this is with the whitewash. The more like, it just took out so much of the yellow tones. That's exactly what I want. My dreams have come to life, you guys. 
it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, it looks so freaking good. All right, you guys, it is time to put Polly on this dresser. I'm gonna use polycrylic in a clear matte coat. This is going to make sure that this table is durable. This is going to be a dining table and I'm actually going to be selling this eventually. So I don't make sure it's nice and durable for people. And um, this is polycrylic and this will not turn it yellow. And we worked so hard to get the finish to be really beautiful on this. We don't want it to turn yellow and polyurethane is notorious for turning pieces yellow. So polycrylic won't do that. Um, Garage is a little cramped right now. I'm gonna be re getting ready to do these chairs here in a little bit because this table and this, this these chairs need to hold people next next Wednesday and it is Monday. So next Thursday is Thanksgiving and we have family coming. So I gotta get this table done. What I'm gonna be using, polycrylic, you can pick this up, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, a lot of those places. And then I use dollar store brushes, you guys. Things do not have to be expensive to redo things. You can get brushes at the dollar store. This came in a two pack for $1, so 50 cents each. You could use a foam roller on this, but I really don't wanna mess with getting a paint tray out and everything. And I'm gonna be sanding it down anyway in between coats to make sure it's nice and smooth. So I'm not too, I'm not too worried about that. Make sure that this is nice and mixed up and we're gonna go to town. So I'm gonna start with the top on this piece. Got gloves on and all you want to do very nice thin coats don't go too crazy because that's when you're going to get the insane brush strokes okay so we're just going to start on the edge here and very lightly put a coat of poly on this All right, you guys, here is the table after one coat of poly. You can't even really see. Um, basically, all I'm gonna do is let this dry overnight. Um, so I don't have time tonight to put on another coat, but I'll put on at least two more coats, um, maybe even three, on, especially just the top layer. The legs, I'll probably just put two to three. All right, you guys, I am back. It is the next day and I wanna try and show you, I think I can, show you a little bit of the brush strokes and how I'm gonna use this thousand grit sandpaper to really get it nice and smooth. I'm gonna start with a thousand and maybe go up a little bit and see, but you can tell the poly is on here. Like it just feels a little bit different. It's still like pretty much a matte look to it, but it definitely looks a little bit more protected, but there are some brush strokes. So I wanna show you that and then show you how I get them to go away. All right, this view, this view is exactly perfect. So you can see when I put it on, I go with the grain and then I kind of go against it just to like, it gets it a little more smooth. That area, I might have accidentally gone over it too many times. You don't want to brush it on, brush too many times. So what I'm gonna do, and we'll see if you can see this. Taking this sandpaper. and just going over it. Now, you definitely wanna go more with the grain. That was kind of a no-no on my part, but I will feel nice and smooth to the touch. The good thing is this isn't the final coat, so you're not gonna really be able to see that. So all you do is go over with sandpaper. So all I'm gonna be doing is taking this along the entire top. And I'm sorry if you hate this sound. <laughs> But this is crucial if you want this to be a nice, smooth finish. So here is the finished table. I absolutely love, love, love how it turned out. I think it just looks absolutely amazing. And it looks so much more modern with this type of finish. 
My next video will also be about the chairs and how I painted these and the, you know, gave them a modern look as well. Again, this whole set was $150 plus supplies and to refinish this, but I think it was so, so worth it. And it's been months since I redid this and it's held up absolutely amazing. I'm so, so happy with it. It was a labor of love, but I love how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about how to redo furniture. I hope it inspires you. If you have redone anything, please let me know down in the comments or if you, I don't know if this inspires you to go on Facebook Marketplace, please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in a video very, very soon. Bye.